Sarah, you've just come from TV, haven't you? Can you tell this pancake makeup doesn't make me look like myself? Is that it? They really put a lot of a lot of spray in that hair, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, it's got to how they make it stay in place and do what they want it to do. Look like a local evening news anchor. Mm. I love that. You should be sitting next to Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is JVL here with my best friend, Sarah Longwell, publisher of The Bulwark. Okay, you had wanted to say something that was underappreciated. Okay. I think that we continue to operate, you and I and everybody else, roughly our age. So I, when I was uh, on TV yesterday, we were talking about TikTok. And I'm not on TikTok. And uh, they, as they have, they've passed this bill with, by the way, TikTok must be that so bad that that many Republicans and Democrats voted for the same thing. I haven't TikTok seen that many terrible. Republicans and Democrats agree on something in a very long time. Anyway, they were playing this clip of, you know, TikTok's been running, the, like, they've been letting their users know. They're like, oh, they're going to try to ban TikTok. And so they showed all these users being like, no, like the wailing and gnashing of teeth uh, from young people over TikTok. And I I felt really old listening to it, in part Part because I couldn't understand like things they were saying, like I left my job to become an influencer on TikTok full time, and how dare you take this away from me? I was also just like, even as much as I talk to voters, I can still be surprised by the extent to which people can be totally sanguine and disinterested in Trump's relationships with Putin, with China, uh, how corrupt he is in so many ways. But like, you come for their TikTok. Right? Like the democracy is under threat, no one cares. But you come Gotta for their Chinese spyware, uh, and people are oh losing their minds. But here's this is this is the thing I was thinking about. You know, the political analysis. One of the criticisms of it that I think is really true is how you always fight the last war, right? And I spend a lot of time thinking about how voters talked and behaved in 2020 and 2022. I, saw, I did a debate with Patrick Ruffini. Um, for this like Canadian bunk debates. I've done it before. And Patrick's like an anti-anti. Oh, uh, yeah. and, That's his move. And, right. And so he was, uh, but he, he was making some totally fair points um, about how the, the question was, be it resolved, uh, Joe or Donald Trump is a strong general election candidate. Um, and I took the opposite of that. But so he was talking about why the, why 2024 the issue set, immigration, the economy, crime, favors Trump so much better than it did in 2020 when the issue was COVID, essentially, right? Um, and that now you've got Joe Biden, who's a much, who's a very weak incumbent. And I think those are sort of, those were the most, the best points he had. Um, why did you take the opposite on that? Like, I'm that curious. Trump's a strong the, candidate? Yeah, why did you take that Trump isn't a strong candidate? Because like, don't you, I mean, you think that he is a strong candidate. I sure don't. No. Um, here's what I think. I think he can win. And so at one point, Patrick accused me of reframing the debate. But I would say the debate to me, the question was, is Trump a strong general election candidate? Um, and I think somebody who lost in 2018, who lost in 2020, and who lost again in 2022, uh, there's nothing about that that says strong. Now, he's a very strong primary candidate, a very strong Republican primary candidate. But he has been... Uh, He's been just bleeding these college-educated suburban voters. And the thing about the Electoral College is it often works against Democrats. Uh, but w the panic over the slide with Hispanics and black voters, I think it is possible that Donald Trump wins Nevada uh, and Georgia. Oh, yeah. But I still think he loses Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Arizona. And then there's also the Nebraska too, you mm -hmm. know, uh, which kind of could just put him over the edge, even if he just had Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And it's a weird, it's a weird thing, but like, it's actually white voters, uh, as like, like Joe Biden sort of needs to do better with white voters to account for the fact that he's slipping with especially black men, uh, but ve and then especially just Hispanics overall. He's doing okay with black women, but with black men and then Hispanics, men and women, he's, there's a lot of, he's, the side is real. I mean, it's just directionally, it's in all the polls. Um, and so I think that we should, like, I, I brought up the young people because 
this, it, we like forget because we've now been living it, that 10 years almost have gone by mm-hmm. since Donald Trump has been on the scene, like eight or nine. There is a whole generation of voters now who are almost 30, uh, you know, who maybe had voted once before, a lot of people who'd never voted. Donald Trump has been the face of the Republican Party now yeah. uh, for all the Zoomers. Uh, and, you know, Gen X, he's been around. So, like, or sorry, Gen Z. Um, I just, uh, I, I worry that there's a, like, the TikTok thing made me feel like, man, I have no idea what, like, I'm dealing with with these kids. Um, and when I talk to young voters, I think uh, they still make sense to me. But, like, the idea, one of the things about young voters is um, voting is still a big part of their identity, right? They have all these, they can be very, well, I would never vote for Joe Biden because of uh, Israel and Gaza and, you know, it would be, it would, like, hurt my soul to do it. Like, they don't think tactically right. about it. And so I just, I get very worried uh, about how, and, like, the third party stuff, <clears throat> this is what was making me think about it. The third party stuff, we can look back and get some sense, like, okay, Jill Stein got this, and then Joe Biden did, there was less third party, and Libertarian didn't do anything um, in 2020, unlike in 2016. But I'm not sure how, like, I think things have changed so much that I'm just not sure what Aaron Rodgers and RFK do. I'm not sure what Cornell West does. I'm not sure what Jill Stein does and how much the third parties can. There's so much, like, a pox on both their houses. There's so much, like, did you see this? Some I think someone put this in the Slack about, uh, I think it was a Michigan poll where 60% of respondents said that the economy was bad and the exact same number said that their personal finances were good. It sounds like a normal thing that happens in America in 2024. I'm just saying, like, the vibes. The vibes are are, are tough. And, like, Rafini's point about the, the issue set of immigration crime and the economy favoring Trump, are, are I think that, it, that was, like, his best point that he made that I think is true. Um, so anyway, my, I think that we have two very weak general election candidates. Like, if Nikki Haley uh, had been the Republican nominee, I, I think she would smoke Biden. No. Uh, like so I'm sorry. Lot. Let me let me let me say, Nikki Haley only smokes Biden in a universe in which Donald Trump does not exist. In mm. a universe in which Nikki Haley, you know, has that's really a good point. Donald of Trump. course, that's true. Yes, of course, that's uh, this is true. why. I mean, this is why Donald Trump was the strongest of ava- in the real world. Donald Trump was the strongest available candidate for Republicans because Donald Trump could not abide somebody defeating him, and had he lost. He would have actively attempted to sabotage the Republican nominee. Trump was the only one who could unite the Republican Party. Unite meaning the Republican Party versus the Trump Party. Yeah. <laughs> because he's willing to blow it up. Yeah. Right. I, I agree with that. Um, the, I, uh, I, I hear what you're saying and I agree. And I, I don't – I have to say I don't understand the TikTok – politics here because i assumed it was an unalloyed good for biden um to ban tiktok to ban tiktok no and the idea that uh right so you and tim are both saying that and i i hadn't quite clocked that um because again tiktok won't be banned tiktok will just be sold it'll still be tiktok but it'll be like oracle running tiktok that's or if they like let that. them sell it uh, well, that's um, the whole idea is to force the sale of it. Yeah, that's, but they might not sell. Well, it's possible that the it's Chinese banned. Communist Party could decide that it is worth more to them to hurt Joe Biden's reelection chances than to pocket the money from the sale of TikTok. In fact, it probably is worth more to them. Yeah, maybe. I've been on the set with this TikTok expert uh, a couple times, and so she said a bunch of things that I'm like, oh, well, that's different. That makes sense. That's not how I thought about this. Uh, and one of them on so Mnuchin, you know, announced t- today or yesterday that he was going to try to buy TikTok. Mm-hmm. And my first instinct was like, "What are you talking about? A member of Trump's cabinet buying TikTok?" And she was like, "No." She's like, "He doesn't. Mnuchin's not going to buy TikTok. He's going to go around to KKR and a bunch of, uh, you know, assemble American, money, right? Yeah. yeah, and assemble a bunch of like U.S. capital and people who care about." It. And I was like. 
that did make me feel slightly better about the whole thing. Oh yeah, nobody, no individual has the money to buy. Elon it's like Musk hundred billion could not buy TikTok. Yeah, he could, he simply could not do it. Like Certainly you know, it was a stretch now, for him to buy Twitter. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it, it's a it will be purchased by either a conglomerate, you know, conglomeration of capital, or it would be. Like Apple could do it or Oracle or Microsoft could do it. Um, but those would have like antitrust problems. And so it's actually probably e- – this is what she told me. That the, I that, think that's they, right. They would actually have big antitrust problems and so that it's actually – the easiest path is to like get a bunch of aligned capital together. I think that's um, right. And, and that was and so that, that, But what if this – so what if that happens? Yeah. What okay. if TikTok well, that, is sold – doesn't that become good for Biden? That's good. That's Isn't good that for like, Biden if they sell it. Now, I don't know that the chi- – but here's the other thing she said about the timeline. So what happens if they ban TikTok, let's say? Um, now, she said that it would just stop updating on your phone. But so they would still have TikTok for a period of time. Mm-hmm. And so she was like maybe it won't hurt him because people won't know that it's banned for a while uh, because it will take like a while for the uh, – the algorithm to go south on people and for well, unless tiktok is using the app to tell people that it's been banned right in the same way they were telling I guess people that's to call true. their congressman right mm-hmm. yeah i just I, the, the 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 extent to which you can't underestimate that it would matter more to young people that are addicted to tiktok uh that they would withhold their vote for joe biden over that uh more well, than the, anything the, else more than they the care about abortion then the youths would deserve what they got. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, so we on the Thursday night show last night we did a, we did a weird show. I did uh, me, Sebastian, and Ben. I was talking to that them, is a weird show. The youths. It was just asking them about like you know what the world looks like from the perspective of somebody who is who is young and not already <sighs> creeping towards the Grim Reaper. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, and Don't one of the things. So, so we talked a little bit about their involvement in college Republicans. And how you – know, so they were coming out of college as Trump was taking over the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And the shift in which – you know, so all of the college Republicans that they knew were like Rubio people and Fiorina people and they all hated Trump. And yeah. none of these college Republicans voted for Trump or wanted Trump. And many of them sort of subsequently left the Republican Party. But now you go to a college, and you, when you're on campus, any college Republican you meet is like a Trump superfan, MAGA, diehard, TPOSA type. And this is a, like as you were saying, there's like a total paradigm shift because he's the reality, right? If you are in college now, then you were 10 years old when the Republican Party was in its pre-Trump phase. You have no memory of like what the Mitt Romney, George W. Bush Ronald Reagan Republican Party was. You're just in for the – you're there for the horse face stuff now. Yeah. If you're a college Republican, you're not there for Marco Rubio's New American Century or something. There, You're there because you want the, the guy who says he'll be a dictator. Yeah. You're there because you like January 6th. That is weird as hell to, to contemplate. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, there's, there's more show. Oh, there is? Yeah. Are we still talking? We have more yeah, talking? We're still, we're still talking. The, the talking goes on. But that's only for the, you know, the, the people who are inside the Velvet Rope, the, the Bulwark Plus members. Oh, they got to subscribe. Yeah. Tell them to subscribe. Tell the you people, You should subscribe. Sarah. Guys, why wouldn't you subscribe? You get all kinds of things. You get some some extra uh, me and JVL. You get some extra me and George Conway. Do you get? Oh, you get JVL's triad. It's one of the best things the Bulwark offers. I read it at least once or twice a week. <laughs> Yes. Go and subscribe. We'd love to have you.